Welcome to the Eastern Sib Podcast at the Historian's Eye. Please subscribe, and if you'd like to be notified when new episodes are released, click the bell icon. For history lovers, the valuable gift of China's long tradition is largely owed to Sima Qian, who lived from about 145 to 86 BC. Although he is commonly referred to as a Chinese historian, he was actually the grand astrologer of Emperor Wu of Han. Sima Qian was also the author of China's first comprehensive and systematic book of the history of the world known to the Chinese at that time. Sima Qian's only known relative is Sima Tan, his father. Nowhere in his autobiography does Sima Qian mention any siblings, a mother, a wife, or children. Sima Qian was strongly bound to his father, who was the grand astrologer at the imperial court, and he followed in his father's footsteps by learning the astrologer's profession and himself becoming the grand astrologer after his father passed away. The responsibilities of the office of the grand astrologer revolved around activities which combined the observation of natural occurrence, record keeping, calendar making, and different forms of divination. During Zuma Qian's time, however, the once prestigious office of Grand Astrologer declined in importance. On his deathbed, Zuma Tan told his son about an important task which remained unfinished. Quote, I am dying. You must become the Grand Astrologer, and as the Grand Astrologer do not forget that which I have desired to set in order and write. The feudal lords have joined together, but their scribal records have been scattered and discontinued. Now the Han has risen, and all the world is united under one ruler. Yet as grand astrologer, I have not set an order and recorded the glorious sovereigns, worthy rulers, loyal ministers, and gentlemen who died for righteousness. I am fearful that the historical writings of the world will be discarded. You must bear this in mind. The quote is from the Shiji. Sima Qian agreed to set in order the historical records. This was the last promise he made his father. Given what we know about the Grand Astrologer's responsibility, Sima Tan's desire was more personal than professional. When Sima Qian was already performing his task as Grand Astrologer, and before he could complete his historical work, an important incident took place. In 99 BC, he came to the defense of a general who had been captured on the barbarian frontier and went to the emperor in the general's defense. After hearing Suma's defense, Emperor Wu was filled with imperial wrath and Suma Chen was charged with defaming the emperor, a crime punishable by death. His sentence was later changed to castration. There was no greater disgrace for a man to, than to be castrated, especially for a childless man, given that the funerary rites in China could only be carried out by one son. His afterlife was thus compromised, and his family life would come to an end. Chinese culture was already well aware of history, but Sima Qian was the first person on record who approached history in a careful and systematic way. Sima Qian's father had apparently already gathered some material and may have even begun writing, but his project was interrupted by his own death. Being the Grand astrologer Sima Qian had full access to the imperial archives, so he started to gather the fragments of the past, classifying them and trying to make sense of them. His massive work, known as the Shiji, started to take form. The name Shiji is normally translated as records of the grand historian, although some authors who have specialized in Sima Qian's life believe his translation believe this translation is not fully accurate. The Chinese worm Shi means scribe. These officials did record historical events, but they did not engage in the interpretation of such events, which is the type of task that historians do. Furthermore, Shiji was not originally the name Shuma Chen's work. It was a generic term used for the work of scribal recorders in feudal states. Records of scribes is more accurate translation of Suma Qian's work. For about a decade, Suma Qian worked on his historical project. Unlike other civilizations, the creation of the world was not the central issue of Chinese tradition. This is why Suma Qian's work does not begin with an account of the creation of the world, but with a ruler. The beginning of the world and the beginning of civilization are the same thing for Suma Qian. The Shiji includes 130 chapters, each of them divided into five different sections. Some authors have pointed out that Suma Qian's work mostly consisted of copying and pasting what other authors wrote before him. It is true that the contents of the Shiji are largely borrowed from other sources. It is equally true that Suma Qian rewrote and organized all this content in a very systematic way. Still, if we cannot grant him the status of a talented writer, we should grant him that of a great editor. 
However, the most important innovation of Summa Qian is his critical approach to historiography. He evaluates his sources on the basis of rational principles, observation, and primary sources. He even interviewed specialists on different topics and first-hand witnesses of contemporary events that he recorded. He also visited many cities and locations of historical importance in order to have a better understanding of history. Summa Qian's work is the earliest, most complete historical record of civilization written by a single man that we know of, and it constitutes one of the main sources of historical knowledge of ancient China.